Hey guys, welcome to Relationship Stories with Story Slices, where we slice through the best Reddit tales just for you. Let's dive right into the first story. The first one is the title story, and it starts like this. It was supposed to be the start of my dream, a piece of land to call my own, where I could build the house I'd always wanted. Little did I know that this dream would turn into a nightmare, all thanks to a neighbor I hadn't even met yet. But let me start from the beginning. My name's Mike, and I've been saving up for years to buy a plot of land. I'm a 35-year-old software developer, and while I make decent money, Property prices in our area are through the roof. It took me nearly a decade of pinching pennies, but I finally had enough for a down payment on a beautiful two-acre lot just outside of town. The day I closed on the property was one of the happiest of my life. I remember standing there, looking out over the gently sloping land, imagining where I'd put the house, where I'd plant a garden. The real estate agent, Sarah, was there with me. Congratulations, Mike, she said, handing me the keys to the gate at the front of the property. It's all yours now. I couldn't stop grinning. Thanks, Sarah. I can't believe it's finally happened. You've worked hard for this, she replied. Now, remember what we talked about. It might be a good idea to put up some kind of marker or fence soon, just to clearly establish the property lines. Your neighbors on either side have been here a while, and sometimes people can get a bit… Territorial? I nodded, only half listening. I was too excited about my plans. Sure, sure, I'll get to it soon. I want to start drawing up plans for the house first, though. Sarah gave me a look that I'd later wish I'd paid more attention to. All right, but don't wait too long. Anyway, here are all your documents. Congratulations again. I spent the next week in a state of euphoria. Every evening after work, I'd drive out to my land and just walk around, planning and dreaming. I met one of my neighbors, an older gentleman named Frank, who seemed nice enough. He welcomed me to the area, and we chatted about my plans for the property. It was about a week and a half after I'd closed on the land that things started to go wrong. I drove out to the property one evening, excited to start measuring out where I wanted to put the house. As I pulled up to the gate, I noticed something odd. There was a truck parked just inside my property, and I could hear the sound of machinery. Confused and a little worried, I got out of my car and walked up to the gate. What I saw made my jaw drop. A crew of workers was busy erecting a fence, on my land. I rushed over, waving my arms. Hey, hey, what's going on here? A burly man who seemed to be in charge of the crew looked up at me. We're putting up a fence. What's it look like? But this is my property, I sputtered. I didn't order any fence. The man shrugged. Lady who hired us said it was her land. Take it up with her. He jerked his thumb towards a woman standing a little ways off, surveying the work. I stormed over to her, my face hot with anger. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? The woman turned to face me. She was probably in her late forties, with bleached blonde hair and an expression that could curdle milk. I'm putting up a fence on my property, she said, her voice dripping with condescension. Who are you? I'm Mike, and this is my property, I said, trying to keep my voice level. I just bought it two weeks ago. The woman laughed, a harsh, grating sound. Oh, honey, I don't know what you think you bought, but this land has been in my family for generations. I'm just finally getting around to fencing it off. I was dumbfounded. What? No, that's impossible. I have the deed right here. I pulled out my phone, where I'd saved a digital copy of the deed. She barely glanced at it. I don't know what kind of scam you think you're pulling, but this is my land. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a fence to oversee. You can't do this, I protested. This is illegal. She turned back to me, her eyes narrowed. Listen here, you little twerp. I'm Karen Davidson. My family has owned half this county for longer than you've been alive. You want to talk about illegal? How about I call the sheriff and report you for trespassing? I stood there, mouth agape, as she turned her back on me and walked away. The fence crew continued their work, ignoring me completely. In a daze, I walked back to my car and sat down heavily in the driver's seat. This couldn't be happening. I'd saved for so long, worked so hard. How could this woman just show up and claim my land? With shaking hands, I called Sarah, my real estate agent. Sarah? It's Mike. We've got a problem. I quickly explained the situation to her. She sounded as shocked as I felt. That's impossible, she said. We did all the title searches. The land is definitely yours, Mike. This woman, Karen, she has no claim to it at all. Well, she seems to think she does, I replied, watching as the fence crew continued their work. What do I do, Sarah? Sarah was quiet for a moment. Okay, here's what you need to do. First, document everything. Take pictures of the fence, the crew, everything. Then, I want you to go to the police and file a report for trespassing and vandalism. Will that work? I asked doubtfully. It's a start, Sarah said. But more importantly, you need to get a lawyer involved. This is a serious situation, Mike. If we don't nip this in the bud, it could turn into a real nightmare. After hanging up with Sarah, I did as she suggested. I took dozens of photos and even a few videos, careful to stay on what I knew was my side of the property line. Then, I drove to the local police station. The officer at the desk looked bored as I explained my situation. He took down my information and said they'd send someone out to look into it, but I could tell from his tone that he didn't consider it a high priority. 
Frustrated and feeling helpless, I went home and started researching property lawyers. I found a few that looked promising, and sent out some emails explaining my situation. The next morning, I woke up to find responses from two of the lawyers I'd contacted. One politely declined to take the case, citing a full workload. The other, a woman named Lindsay, expressed interest and asked if we could meet that afternoon. I took a half day off work and met Lindsay at her office. She was younger than I expected, probably in her early 40s, with sharp eyes and a no-nonsense demeanor that immediately put me at ease. So Mike, she said after we'd exchanged pleasantries, tell me about this fence situation. I laid out the whole story for her, showing her the photos I'd taken and the copy of my deed. Lindsay listened intently, occasionally asking for clarification on certain points. When I finished, she leaned back in her chair, a small smile playing on her lips. Well Mike, I have good news, and bad news. The good news is, you're absolutely in the right here. That land is yours, no question about it. The bad news is, we're dealing with a classic case of adverse possession attempt, and those can get messy. Adverse possession? I asked, confused? Lindsay nodded. It's a legal concept where someone can claim ownership of land if they've been using it openly and continuously for a certain period of time, usually several years. Now, this Karen person doesn't have a leg to stand on legally. You've only owned the property for two weeks after all. But it sounds like she's trying to bully you into giving up your claim. I felt a mix of relief and anger. So what do we do? First things first, Lindsay said. We're going to send her a cease and desist letter. We'll demand that she stop construction on the fence immediately and remove what's already been built. We'll also make it clear that we have documentation proving your ownership, and that we're prepared to take legal action if necessary. And if she ignores that? I asked. Lindsay's smile turned predatory. Then we take her to court. We'll file for an injunction to stop the fence construction and sue for damages. Given the clear documentation we have, it should be an open and shut case. I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. Finally, someone who could help me fight back against this Karen. Let's do it, I said. Lindsay nodded and started typing on her computer. I'll draft the cease and desist letter right now. We'll have it delivered to her by courier this afternoon. In the meantime, I want you to keep documenting everything. If she or her workers show up again, record them. But don't engage directly. Let me handle all communication from here on out. I left Lindsay's office feeling much better than when I'd arrived. Finally, I had a plan of action. I went back to work, trying to focus on my coding projects, but finding my mind constantly drifting back to the land situation. That evening, I drove out to the property again. The fence crew was gone, but to my dismay, I saw that they'd made significant progress. A sturdy wooden fence now ran along nearly half of what I knew to be my property line. Seething, I took more pictures and videos, making sure to get clear shots of how far the fence extended onto my land. As I was doing this, I heard a car pull up behind me. I turned to see Karen getting out of an expensive-looking SUV. She stalked towards me, her face twisted in anger. What do you think you're doing? She demanded. I held up my phone, documenting your illegal activities on my land. Karen's face turned an alarming shade of red. I told you yesterday, this is my land. I don't know who you think you are. I cut her off, remembering Lindsay's advice not to engage directly. Mrs. Davidson, I've retained legal counsel regarding this matter. All future communication should go through my lawyer. You'll be receiving a cease and desist letter shortly. For a moment, Karen looked taken aback. Then her eyes narrowed. Oh, you want to play hardball? Fine, fine. I've got lawyers too, you know. Big shot lawyers from the city. They'll eat your ambulance chaser for breakfast. I didn't respond, just continued taking pictures. Karen stood there fuming for a moment, then stomped back to her car and drove off in a spray of gravel. As soon as she was gone, I called Lindsay to update her on what had happened. She seemed pleased. Good job, Mike, she said. You handled that perfectly. Now, I've got some news for you. I did some digging into Karen Davidson, and it turns out this isn't the first time she's tried something like this. Really? I asked, surprised. Oh yeah, Lindsay replied, and I could hear the smile in her voice. She's got quite a reputation in the county. She's tried to claim chunks of her neighbor's land at least twice before. Both times, she backed down when confronted with legal action. I think she's used to bullying people into giving up their property rights. I felt a surge of anger. So she's just a land-grabbing bully? Essentially, yes, Lindsay agreed. But don't worry. We've got her dead to rights this time. She's not going to know what hit her. Over the next few days, things escalated quickly. Karen received the cease and desist letter but ignored it completely. The fence crew showed up again the next day and continued their work. Lindsay didn't waste any time. She filed for an emergency injunction to stop the fence construction and sued Karen for trespassing, property damage, and legal fees. We also reported the ongoing construction to the police again, this time armed with copies of my deed and the cease and desist letter. This time, the police took it more seriously. They sent out an officer who actually made the fence crew pack up and leave. It was a small victory, but it felt good to finally see some action being taken.
Karen, predictably, didn't take this lying down. She filed a countersuit, claiming that she was the rightful owner of the land and that I was the one trespassing. Her lawsuit was full of wild claims about her family's historical ownership of the land and how the sale to me must have been some kind of mistake or fraud. Lindsay assured me that Karen's claims were baseless, but it still stressed me out. What if there was some loophole, some technicality that could cause me to lose my land? Don't worry, Lindsay told me during one of our meetings. I've gone over every inch of the paperwork. The land is yours, free and clear. Karen's just throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. It's a common tactic when someone knows they don't have a real case. The weeks leading up to our court date were some of the most stressful of my life. I was distracted at work, constantly checking my phone for updates from Lindsay. I drove out to the property every day, half expecting to see Karen there with her fence crew again, but thankfully, the emergency injunction seemed to be holding. Finally, the day of the hearing arrived. I put on my best suit, the one I usually reserve for job interviews, and met Lindsay at the courthouse. She looked cool and collected in a sharp blazer and skirt, a stark contrast to my nervous energy. Ready for this? She asked as we walked into the building. I took a deep breath, as ready as I'll ever be. The courtroom was smaller than I expected, nothing like the grand chambers you see on TV. Karen was already there with her lawyer, a sleek-looking man in an expensive suit. She glared at me as we walked in, but I did my best to ignore her. The judge, an older woman with steel-gray hair and piercing eyes, called the court to order. Karen's lawyer went first, spinning a tale about how the land had been in the Davidson family for generations, and how the sale to me must have been some kind of clerical error. I found myself getting more and more angry as I listened to him talk. It was all lies, every word of it. How could they stand there and say these things? Finally, it was Lindsay's turn. She stood up, straightened her jacket, and began to speak. Your Honor, the facts of this case are clear and indisputable. My client, Michael Jensen, purchased this land legally and in good faith two months ago. We have here the deed properly filed and recorded with the county. She held up a document. We also have records showing that this land was owned by the Wilkins family for the past 50 years before being sold to my client. At no point in that time did it belong to the Davidson family. She went on, methodically dismantling every claim Karen's lawyer had made. She presented satellite images showing the land had been unused for years before I bought it, contradicting Karen's claim that her family had been actively using it. She even had a sworn statement from old Frank, my neighbor, testifying that he'd never seen the Davidsons use the land in the 30 years he'd lived next door. As Lindsay spoke, I watched Karen's face. She started out looking smug, but as Lindsay presented more and more evidence, her expression changed to worry, then to anger. Finally, Lindsay played her trump card. Your Honor, we've also discovered that this is not the first time Mrs. Davidson has attempted to claim land that doesn't belong to her. We have documentation of two previous incidents where she tried to fence off portions of her neighbor's properties, only backing down when faced with legal action. This appears to be a pattern of behavior for Mrs. Davidson, attempting to bully her neighbors into giving up their rightful property. At this, Karen leapt to her feet. That's a lie, she shouted. This is my land. My daddy left it to me. The judge banged her gavel. Mrs. Davidson, control yourself or I'll have you removed from this courtroom. Karen's lawyer tried to do damage control, but it was clear that Lindsay had won the day. The judge listened to a bit more argument from both sides, then called a brief recess to review the evidence. When she returned, she didn't mince words. Based on the evidence presented, it's clear that Mr. Jensen is the legal and rightful owner of the property in question. Mrs. Davidson's claims are without merit. The emergency injunction against further fence construction is hereby made permanent. Furthermore, Mrs. Davidson is ordered to remove the portion of fence already constructed at her own expense and to pay Mr. Jensen's legal fees in full. I sat there in shock as the judge continued, outlining the specifics of her ruling. We had won? The land was mine, unquestionably and irrevocably. Update, update. The judge's ruling felt like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. As we left the courtroom, Lindsay gave me a pat on the back. Congratulations, Mike. You stood your ground, and justice prevailed, she said with a smile. I couldn't stop grinning. Thanks, Lindsay. I couldn't have done it without you. As we walked out of the courthouse, I saw Karen arguing heatedly with her lawyer. When she noticed me, she shot me a glare that could have melted steel. I just nodded at her and kept walking. I wasn't going to let her ruin this moment for me. Over the next few weeks, things started to settle down. True to the judge's order, Karen had the fence removed. I drove out to the property one Saturday to find a crew taking it down. The foreman approached me as I got out of my car. You Mr. Jensen? He asked. I nodded. That's me. He handed me a clipboard. I need you to sign here saying we've removed the fence to your satisfaction. I walked the property line, checking that every last bit of the fence was gone. Satisfied, I signed the form. As the crew packed up, I couldn't help but feel a sense of triumph. My land was finally, truly mine again. But the story wasn't quite over yet. About a month after the court case, I received a letter from Karen's lawyer. My heart sank as I opened it, worried that they were trying to appeal the decision or cause more trouble. To my surprise, it was an offer to buy my land. 
The letter was full of flowery language about rectifying misunderstandings and coming to an amicable solution, but the gist of it was clear. Karen wanted to buy me out, and the offer was substantial, nearly double what I'd paid for the land. For a moment, I was tempted. It would be easy to take the money and walk away, to find another piece of land without all this drama attached to it. But then I remembered all the stress, all the sleepless nights, all the times I'd driven out here and imagined my future home. I called Lindsay to get her advice. Well, it's a generous offer, she said after I'd explained the situation, and it would certainly be the easy way out. But Mike, you fought hard for this land. You don't owe Karen anything. If you want to keep the land, you have every right to do so. I thought about it for a few days, but in the end, the decision wasn't that hard. I drafted a response, politely but firmly declining the offer. This was my land, and I wasn't going to let Karen bully me out of it, no matter how much money she offered. A week after I sent my response, I was out on the property, starting to clear some brush where I planned to build my house. I heard a car pull up and turned to see Karen getting out of her SUV. I tensed up, ready for another confrontation, but as she walked towards me, I noticed something different about her demeanor. She seemed, deflated somehow? Mr. Jensen, she said as she approached, her voice lacking its usual edge. I received your letter. I nodded, unsure what to say. Mrs. Davidson. She sighed, looking out over the land. I suppose I owe you an apology. My behavior? It was unacceptable? To say I was shocked would be an understatement. This was the last thing I expected from Karen. I, she continued, seeming to struggle with the words. This land, it meant a lot to me. My father always talked about expanding our property, buying this plot. When he passed away last year, I guess I got it into my head that I needed to fulfill his dream, no matter what. I felt a twinge of sympathy despite everything she'd put me through. I'm sorry for your loss, Mrs. Davidson, but that doesn't justify what you did. She nodded, looking at the ground. I know. I let grief and pride cloud my judgment. I've lived in this area my whole life, and I've always gotten my way. When you stood up to me, well, I didn't handle it well. That's putting it mildly, I said, but without rancor. Karen actually chuckled at that. Yes, I suppose it is. She turned to face me directly. Mr. Jensen, I want you to know that I'm dropping all of this. No more lawyers. No more offers to buy. This is your land, fair and square. I hope, I hope you'll be happy here. I was stunned by this turn of events, but I managed to respond. Thank you, Mrs. Davidson. I appreciate that. She nodded, then turned to go. As she reached her car, she paused and looked back. You know, my husband's been telling me for years that I need to learn to let things go. Maybe it's time I started listening to him. With that, she got in her car and drove away. I stood there for a while, trying to process what had just happened. It felt like the final chapter in this whole crazy story. Over the next few months, life settled into a new normal. I started construction on my house, and slowly but surely, my dream began to take shape. Karen kept her word. There were no more legal troubles, no more attempts to buy me out. One day, as I was out supervising the foundation being poured, I saw Frank, my neighbor, walking over. Looks like it's really happening, he said, nodding at the construction. I grinned? Sure is. It's been a long road, but we're finally getting there. Frank was quiet for a moment, then said, You know, I've lived next door to Karen for three decades. Never thought I'd see the day she'd back down from anything. You must have really impressed her. I shrugged. I just stood my ground. This land means a lot to me. Frank nodded approvingly. That it does. You know, when you first bought this place, I wasn't sure about you. Thought you might be some city slicker who'd give up at the first sign of trouble. But you proved me wrong. You'll fit in just fine around here. Coming from Frank, that felt like high praise. As he walked back to his property, I looked out over my land, my home. It had been a tough fight, but standing here now, I knew it had all been worth it. The whole experience had taught me a lot. About standing up for myself, about the importance of good neighbors, and about not judging people too quickly. Karen had turned out to be more complex than the simple bully I'd first thought her to be. As I watched the sun setting over what would soon be my new home, I felt a sense of peace settle over me. This land was mine, not just legally, but in every sense that mattered. I'd fought for it, I'd earned it, and now I was going to build a life here. The construction crew was packing up for the day, and as they left, one of them called out, Looking good, Mr. Jensen, you'll be moving in before you know it. I waved goodbye to them, then took one last look around before heading to my car. Tomorrow would bring more work, more challenges, but I was ready for them. This was my land, my future, and nothing and no one was going to take that away from me again. As I drove away, I couldn't help but smile. It had been a wild ride, but I wouldn't have changed a thing. After all, it's not just about owning a piece of land, it's about making it your home. And that's exactly what I was going to do. Are you hungry for more slices of stories? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to never miss out on any videos. See you tomorrow at Story Slices.